There we are. Look at that. All right. Now that it's a ten, it's still ten o'clock. Let's go. Let's go with that. Uh, let's go ahead and call the meeting to order, please. And I will ask the clerk to uh, call roll for us, please. Mr. Mulligan here. Mr. Robertson here. Mr. Hartwig present. We have quorum. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, let's see. We'll uh, ask if there's any corrections or additions to the minutes uh, previously submitted uh, for uh, for the last meeting here last month. Uh, and if I hear none, then I'll accept a motion to accept. Motion to accept. Second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Oh. We don't need to call it, I don't think. You don't need to call it all on that one. <laughs> yeah. No, you're good. You're good. So. Motion approved. Thank you very much. Perfect. Uh, all right. That uh, takes us into uh, item number four. Let's open up a public hearing. And I will uh, ask any witness who intends to testify today to please stand and raise your right hand so the board may swear you in. So anybody from our petitioners that might be uh, testifying. Thank you. All right. Do you solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give in the matters pending before the hearing board today shall, shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you very much. Is somebody online too? Yeah, All right. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And uh, let's see here. Uh, that takes us in uh, to a docket number C 24 08S, uh, short uh, variant for certain TEED. Uh, if uh, I'm assuming that's uh, my petitioner, in Modesto. Perfect. And Shannon, you're taking this one? Yep. Perfect. All right. Um, do you want the petitioner to introduce himself? Uh, yeah. I think yeah, we all know who he is. Hello, I'm uh, Ben Cuthbertson from CertainTeed in Chowchilla. I'm the environmental manager there. Hey, Ben, good to see you, good to see you again from so far away. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, Shannon, go for it. All right, thank you. Uh, good morning. My name is Shannon Moore. I'm an air quality specialist here at the district. Before you this morning is CertainTeed LLC. They operate a glass melting furnace and other equipment associated with the production of fiberglass insulation. In order to control particulate matter emissions, exhaust from the furnace is vented through a preconditioning chamber with caustic soda injection and dry electric, uh, electrostatic precipitator, which creates a high voltage electric field on discharge plates inside the unit. Particulate matter from the exhaust stream passes through the discharge plates, receiving an electric charge and are then deposited on the grounded collector plates. The EP and caustic soda injection system require yearly cleaning, assessment, and maintenance. To complete the work, CertainTe needs to shut down and bypass the entire emissions control system, including the continuous emissions monitoring system and continuous opacity monitoring systems. District Rule 4354 allows for excess emissions during maintenance of add-on emissions control equipment for up to 144 hours per year. However, the emissions exemption does not apply to visible emissions, which are limited by District Rule 4101 to no more than 20% opacity. In the past, certain TEED has experienced visible emissions as high as 95% opacity during maintenance of the emissions control system. Therefore, certain TEED has requested a short variance from requirements of the applicable district rules and sections of the California Health and Safety Code, in addition to conditions of the subject permit. The requested short variance period would be for a consecutive 72-hour period to occur sometime between May 1st, 2024 and May 30th, 2024 inclusive. If granted, the variance would allow the exhaust stream from the glass melting furnace to bypass the emissions control and emissions monitoring equipment while, main, uh, while maintenance is performed on the EP. In addition, the variance would allow visible emissions as high as 95% opacity. The variance is necessary because the glass melting furnace, once heated up, operates nonstop for many years in what is known as a campaign. It cannot be shut off without causing significant damage to the furnace. A furnace takes several days to shut down and several weeks to get back to operational temperature. The district believes the required findings as set forth in the California Health and Safety Code can be made and recommends that certain TEED LLC be granted a short variance with the conditions on pages four and five. And that concludes the district's presentation. Thanks, Shannon. Ben, do you have any uh, comments or anything to add here? This is kind of a, one of the things you guys do pretty frequently or relatively frequently. Yes, that's correct. It's typical. Uh, this, this EP has been rebuilt uh, within the last two years. We don't expect to find uh, much in, in the way of repairs that need to be done inside. So we've asked for 72 hours, but uh, we're expecting uh, less than 48 hours use of, of the time that we've asked for. Okay. Is there any questions, uh, Andy? Yeah, the, uh, uh, the petition says yearly cleaning. So do you only expect to do this this, this time 
this year, or do you expect uh, we, to have to do it again? We expect to do it. We expect to do it just this one time this year. If it appears that there's a degradation in the in the efficiency, it's possible we could do it late in the year as well. And is there any other maintenance you're piggybacking on this while you have the variance? Uh, no, not not on the EP. No. Okay. Sure, you got anything? No questions. All right. Uh, then I'll ask if uh, any member of the public has any uh, comments on this matter at all. We have one online, uh, Cynthia Pinto Cabrera. Hi, good morning. Does she wish to comment? No. Yes. Yeah, I just have a couple of questions. Cynthia Pinto Cabrera, um, policy coordinator with the Central Valley Air Quality Coalition. Um, and yeah, this just came across our, our desk here. We have a couple of questions on um, what the cleaning process involves, um, what can parts slash equipment break, or if there's any other issues during the uh, process that could potentially expand it to 72 hours. And yeah, we have a, a lot of outstanding questions that we could submit. Um, I could go through the list right now verbally or submit it written, whichever you all um, prefer. But yeah, we have a couple of questions about um, this shutdown, given that uh, Carb Ciders database listed this as the number three PM10 emitter in the valley and the number one non-ag PM10 emitter. So I just have a couple of questions and wondering if um, I can send those in or what the timeline is to um, get some well, of these questions answered. So the, the timeline would be now to, to ask your questions uh, because this is something where we would most likely take action on uh, today. So this would be the time to ask those questions. Perfect. So yeah, just um, wondering uh, if there's any parts or, or the equipment that can, res any potential for a, a delay that could extend the 72 hours. I know they just mentioned that they're expecting 48 hours, but wondering if there's anything else that might go wrong there. No. I, I, I don't believe that there's uh, anything that we're going to find internal to the EP that indicates okay. that there would need to be an expanded use of the time that we've asked for. Um, we watch the, the parameters uh, of the EP fairly closely on a daily basis, and there's no indication that there are any mechanical issues interior to the EP itself. We just we we do need to clean it. It's something that that's necessary. And while we're cleaning it, there's there's an assessment done of all the the uh, functioning equipment inside of the structure of the EP. It's a large large building with uh, sheet packs in it. Uh, like Shannon said, there's discharge and collector plates, and we take a look at the connections there, uh, the wrapping system and uh, the transporter system, which transports the dust out of the EP just to ensure that there aren't any failure points um, while, we're, while we're taking a look inside. Um, no, I, I, don't, I don't expect to find anything uh, just based on the information that we get from the EP daily. Perfect, yeah, thank you. That just answers my questions, thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, if there's no other public comment, then uh, I'll uh, ask if there is a motion that's uh, sure. ready to be made. I move to approve certain TLLC's petition for a short variance set forth in docket number C dash. Excuse me. Thank you, the chair. Through the chair, we do need to call for comments in Modesto also. Oh, okay. Are there any public comments in Modesto? No public comment in Modesto. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Go right. ahead, Andy. I'll rewind. <laughs> I, I move to approve certain TLLC's petition for a short variance set forth in docket number C 24 08 S with the required six findings of the health and safety code adopted by references set forth in the staff report. Variance shall be effective for a consecutive 72 hour period of time to occur between May 21st, 2024 and May 30th, 2024, inclusive or until the maintenance repairs have been completed and the emission control system has been returned to compliant operation, whichever occurs first and shall be subject to the conditions on pages four to five of this staff report. Thank you. Is there a second? A second. Thank you, Jerry. 
Uh, we have a motion and a second, so if you'd please call the roll. Mr. Mulligan? Yes. Mr. Robertson? Yes. Mr. Hartwig? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. You're good to go, Mr. Gustafson. Thank All you. right, uh, that, that takes us then. Thank you. And that takes us now to uh, docket number uh, C-2410S, a short variance, uh, Malaga Power LLC. If uh, those petitioners would please uh, come forward and state their names. <clears throat> Morning. 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 Tisha, environmental uh, health and safety for Malaga Power. And uh, Joe Shepherd, plant manager for Silicon Energy Malaga Power. All right. And Estella, are you, I take it you're taking. Uh, this one here? Yes, that's correct. Perfect. Good morning. Uh, my name is Estela Soto, and I'm the senior air quality specialist here with the district. And before you uh, is Malaga Power LLC. Uh, Malaga is an electricity generating facility consisting of two natural gas fired combustion turbine generators with water spray premixed combustion system served by an oxidation catalyst and a selective catalytic reduction or SCR system. The facility utilizes these turbines to provide electricity to the surrounding community during instances of peak electricity demand. Malaga will be replacing the NOx CO02 and the inlet NOx analyzers for units C-4305-1-5 and-2-3. Uh, the analyzers are part of Malaga's Continuous Emissions Monitoring System, or SEMP, which allow the facility to demonstrate compliance with federal, state, and local regulations while combusting natural gas to create electricity. The facility, which is currently using Teledyne analyzers, is part of a larger fleet that utilizes Horiba analyzers to measure stack emissions. The new analyzer installation is part of several measures being taken to upgrade aging analyzers to improve reliability and standardized equipment used across the fleet. Once the analyzers are installed and calibrated, the SEMS will begin coll collecting data. However, the data will not be valid until the system successfully completes the testing and certification process, including a seven-day drift test and a relative, relative accuracy test uh, audit or errata. Malaga is seeking a variance to allow them to continue to operate while the new analyzers are installed, tested, and the SEMS is recertified. During the variance period, the emissions control equipment will continue to function as designed and Malaga will log all, oper all operating data in order to demonstrate compliance with the emission limits of their permit. No excess emissions are expected. Therefore, Malaga has requested a short variance from the applicable requirements of district rules in addition to the conditions of the subject permits. The requested short variance uh, period will occur sometime between April 17th and July 16, 2024. If granted, the variance would allow the continued operation without a certified SEMS until the new analyzers on the combustion turbine generators are installed and the SEMS can be certified for the applicable parts of the Code of uh, Federal Regulations. The district believes that the required findings that set forth in the California Health and Safety Code can be made and recommends that Malaga be granted a short variance with the conditions on pages three and four of the staff report. And that concludes the district's presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Stella. Uh, do you guys have anything you'd like to add or any presentation you'd like to make or just answer questions? Okay. Yeah, I bet. I believe we're fine to just answer questions. Thank you. Okay. So or do you have, do we have any questions then from our board? I have a question, but go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So it mentions here seven day drift test rata. Cylinder gas audit, you're going to do one of those? A linearity is required for the um, recertification process. Um, that was part of the schedule. We will likely do a similar gas audit as well farther along in the process. Okay. And cycle time test? Yes. Okay. And um, what's the extent of the, uh, uh, of the replacement? Are you just doing the analyzers? Are you doing the sampling system, the heated sample line, the probe? All of the above? Only the analyzers. Okay. So you expect the RADA to come out since you're in a representative point, I assume, for your probe? Correct. Yeah, nothing is changing besides the analyzers and the spans on them to be a little bit closer into the uh, where we operate the units. Okay. And the um, you have a third-party tester lined up to do the RADA? 
We do. We'll be utilizing TRC. Okay. All right. And then um, I assume you've got an oxidation catalyst and an SCR on this system, right? That's correct. Okay. So how are you going to control ammonia? Because I assume it uses inlet NOx and or stack NOx to control your ammonia flow. How are you going to do that? Control ammonia. So we're not changing any of the ammonia flow monitors or our ammonia delivery system, nor any of the catalysts. Um, I'm not sure I completely understand the question. So the way an SCR works is it monitors the, in, the NOx going into your catalyst and it matches. So it's got to know the NOx to match the ammonia flow. You're not going to have a NOx analyzer if you run. You're right. You're replacing one of the inlet NOx analyzers. And if you don't expect excess emissions, but if you run, how are you going to control that ammonia flow? Uh, well, part 75 actually allows for a probationary calibration that we plan on doing once we get the analyzers installed, which allows for valid data up until you complete the recertification process. So by monitoring the inlet NOx measurements and the outlet NOx, that'll give us a representation of what our ammonia is, um, how much NOx our ammonia is controlling. And that should give, that'll give us um, conditionally valid data up until the certification process is complete. Okay, so you're going to use the new the data from the new analyzer. You're not going to change anything with your control system or control it in manual when after you install the analyzer. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Technical questions here. <laughs> okay, so a much maybe an easier question <laughs> is how, tell me about the seven day drift test. How does that perform? Um, that'll have to be an online calibration across seven, seven consecutive runs. And you have to monitor within certain parameters um, how much your system will fluctuate its readings. Okay, so it's not like a, outside the facility a drift test as far as it, where they... No, it's how much you're, it's how accurate your analyzers are across. Okay, drift is within the control. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, they're not allowed to calibrate in between, so you got to let it go you're for thinking, seven days. You're thinking, spray, you're thinking spray drift or I something am. like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Good, good questions, guys. Uh, are there any other questions here from the board? All right. Do we have any questions in Modesto? No questions in Modesto. Thank you. Do we have anybody online that uh, wishes to ask any questions? No online comments. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, hearing hearing no more questions, let me uh, let me just ask. Uh, I'll do it. Uh, I move to approve Malaga Power LLC's petition for a short variance set forth in docket number C-24-10 S with the required six findings of the health and safety code adopted by references set forth in the staff report. Variance shall be effective from April 17th, 2024 to July 16th, 2024 inclusive or until new analyzers are installed and the SEMS is certified, whichever occurs first and shall be subject to the conditions on pages three to four of the staff report. I'll second. All right. If you please call the roll. Mr. Mulligan. Yes. Mr. Robertson. Yes. Mr. Hartwig. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. And thank you, staff, as well. Yeah. All right. Uh, that takes us into uh, item number five, uh, public comments. Uh, time's available for uh, question comments from the public on matters within the board's jurisdiction, not on the agenda. It's requested that no comments be made during this period on items on the agenda. The public may make comments after each board agenda item. Uh, additionally, state law prohibits hearing board from acting on matters that are not on this agenda. Do we have any public uh, comments? Any public comments in Modesto? No public comment in Modesto. Showing no public comments in Fresno, none online. Thank you very much. All right, that takes us to item number six, uh, hearing board member comments. Any comments from uh, any no. gentleman here? Thank you. Uh, that takes us into the seven, which is new business, of which there appears to be none, which leads us to number eight, uh, which is adjournment. So thank you all. Thanks. Thanks.